Hi, I'm Shilpa. Today's session features an interview with Pranjal Jain, founder and CEO of Victory Point India. And today we will discuss how to ace J 2023 April attempt. This video will also help you in understanding how to shortlist syllabus and must not miss topics. Importance of NCERT books in JEE preparation. Importance of NAT questions, mocks and PYQs. How to structure short notes how to prepare for both theory and MCQs at the same time. Sectional organization of JE mains questions. Preparation strategy for tier third, second and first level questions. Routine for best JE main results. So you have to understand which topics were there in which you can score a bit better. You're feeling confident, but you scored a little low. So those are the topics that you must not miss. It, it doesn't depend actually on the topic. It depends on what topics you are more comfortable in, but you haven't been able to score very much yet. So those are the, are the topics where you have to focus a lot and gain the mark that you have lost in the first attempt. So a lot of questions, a lot of basic questions are going to come from the NCRT level as well. I'm not saying that they're going to be same as NCRT, but we have complete, if you have completed NCRT book, you'll be able to solve around 40, 50% of the questions in the uh, main exam, JE main exam. But for the rest of the questions, you'll have to go a bit higher and you have to study either from some uh, institute book or from standardized book like RD Sharma or somewhere other than NCERT. But for clearing the basics, uh, you have to complete NCERT because they're really good books written by some really great authors and they'll clarify your base so that you can build upon that and also solve the difficult question as and when they come. So numerically, uh, numerical ability questions, basically they do not have a negative marking. So you must attempt those questions. If you haven't even solved them, there is no harm in writing a random number in that because there is no negative marking. Pre PYQs are pre previous year questions. So you must solve previous year questions after you are yeah, like you have read your theory and you're confident that you have completed a particular topic. You have to also test yourself, right? If you have actually understood it properly to the level where you are able to solve the exam the questions that are really going to come in the exam so there are two main things that you have to focus on first is accuracy and the second is speed so even while you are practicing the pyqs like you have taken 30 pyqs so you can set a timer for around 45 minutes solve those questions at the end just check how much marks how many marks were you able to score so that will give you a rough idea how much you will actually be able to score in the original exam so if you have made short notes, uh, if you have gone for a one or two year rigorous uh, study, like rigorous coaching for the past one or two years, so you must have your short notes ready by now. So in short notes also, you have to, uh, when you are reading the short notes, there will be a lot of times when you don't understand a concept from the short notes because they are not 100% of the theory, right? So you may have to go for the books as well. So don't think that you don't have to go for the books anymore. You revise from the short notes. If you are still not able to score well in your mock tests or while you're solving the PYQs, go for the books as well. Uh, there is plenty of time. If you work hard, you can still cover one or two more topics and score a bit better than the last 10. Uh, so to solve the MCQs, you obviously have to go through the theory ones because otherwise you won't be able to solve those numericals which are asked in the MCQs. So if you want to focus on both of them and you're not really comfortable with both of them, so what you need to do is you need to look at your notes. Okay. Uh, if you have made detailed notes, that's okay. If you haven't, then you need to study your notes in short, and then you have to study the theory as well from the book. Don't read entire chapters that will waste a lot of your time. Go through the notes, try to solve the questions. If you are not able to solve a particular questions from a particular topic, only those topics you can go for the standardized books. Otherwise, if you are able to solve all the questions uh, after going through the notes once, notes are going to be enough. Uh, so how you attempt a question or a paper which gives you maximum marks, that depends on a particular student. There is no set way of attempting the question paper. So that is why we have to give a lot of mock tests. We have to experiment a lot of different things. Try experimenting with uh, by starting with different sections. Maybe go for physics first, then go for chemistry, then for maths. Next time you can try it the other way around. So what is whatever is best for you, right? Try to uh, go through that. 
and one very important thing that is mostly better for most students it might not be good for you you have to experiment yourself but start from the topic you are most comfortable in if you think that uh, your physics is best among physics chemistry maths go for physics that will right uh, right from the start it will give you a good confidence when you are able to solve some questions that you are seeing if you are not very good at maths let's say and you are starting with maths that can deter your uh, confidence a lot so if we uh, divide the questions into three levels so let's say tier 3 uh, you can prepare for them straight from ncert all right if you solve all the basic questions from ncert tier like the third level of questions you will be able to solve for tier 2 ncert has some hots okay high order thinking uh, questions so if you solve those you will be able to solve the second tier as well for the first tier you have to go for the pyqs because for the most difficult questions what they do is mainly they mix up a certain number of topics two to three topics together in a single question so that is something that you need to uh, understand how to solve those particular questions and for that you have to go for the pyq if you go for uh, let's say mock tests for, from any abc organization any abc tuition center so the questions that they are making they may or may not be of the same level as je mains because they are not going to set the je mains uh, main exam right so you have to go for the pyqs because for the pyqs you know that they are exactly uh, of the same level which are going to come in the real exam so for solving the top like the hardest questions go for pyqs uh so different people are uh, hardwired differently some of my friends used to study late at night some of them early in the morning so it basically depends on you don't try to change your schedule now it will uh, severely hamper your education whatever pattern you have set whatever hours you have uh, like decided that this is the time that you'll study in so keep uh, keep with the flow just do what you are doing currently just make sure that you are uh, studying for at least 6 to 7 hours every day that's the least you can it can go up to 10 to 12 if you have that kind of motivation right uh so a uh, very common routine that uh, i recommend a lot of students and a lot of students also follow you can wake up early uh you can like have a healthy breakfast go for a little walk so that will freshen you up for the rest of the day then you can just sit for your studies till lunch you can like study for 3 to 4 hours then have a lunch take like half an hour break again hit the books then you uh, go for a session of 3 to 4 hours then you have your dinner time take one hour break okay so that you are completely fresh at night you can go for the rest of 2 to 3 hours of study don't forget to like share and subscribe to our youtube channel